Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Uh, today we're going to do a, uh, a special painting that I'm going to try to do a demonstration of in our community here in a couple of weeks. Um, it's an autumn scene. It's uh, one that Sterling Edwards has actually painted. I'm going to try to copy it and uh, show our community how some uh, watercolor painting can work here and uh, see if I can generate some interest and maybe people uh, interested in taking some lessons. I have my uh, palette here set down in the lower right corner, but I want to go through the paints and brushes with you uh, as I normally do. So here I have my Sterling Edwards set of uh, bristle brushes, a large, medium, and small. Uh, those are really great brushes for blending and uh, making soft edges. I have two flat brushes, a one inch and a half inch. I have three rounds, a number 12, a number 8, and number 4, and I have another round of uh, uh, rigger brush or li script liner they call them. Uh, it's a number six. So I don't know if I'll use all those brushes but certainly going to use enough to paint this painting. Um, the painting we're doing is uh, one that's, uh, matter of fact I'll get up here on the left side. You can see it here on the left top or left corner. Um, this is one that Sterling Edwards did and uh, I'm going to be trying to copy it as close as I can. I won't make it exact I'm sure but uh, has almost no sketch to it. It's basically you see there's like three three trees here uh, showing uh, that's it. So we always start out wet on wet so I'm going to get a bunch of uh, clear water and just wet this paper down. I'm painting on uh, 300 pound Fabriano artistical paper and uh, I just realized in my haste to get painting here I forgot to go through the paints with you. So. Why don't I go back and do that while this is soaking into my paper and I'll come back and give this another coat in a second. Um, let's go back to the uh, palette and <clears throat> I'll show you. Here are my, my paints, uh, Holbein Transparent Watercolors. This is Payne's Gray, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Deep Blue, uh, Prussian Blue, Permanent Violet, Hooker's Green, Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Scarlet, Bright Rose, Brilliant Orange, Quinacridone Gold, Permanent Yellow Deep, and Cad Lemon Yellow. Okay, so that's my paints. I've got my uh, wetting of my paper down here. I've already started it. And uh, <clears throat> so we're going to go through this fairly quickly. Uh, and uh, it shouldn't be a long time to paint this. Um, I'm going to start putting in some of the colors here. I'm going to get some of my uh, brilliant orange out and uh, get a load of that on my palette and uh, take out some of my scarlet here, quinacridone scarlet, uh, put some of it out. I'm getting these bright yellow colors or bright warm colors from a oh, fall scene like you would see. and. Uh, so I'm going to just put these on the palette and have these ready to go and uh, I'll even add a little bit of my uh, bright lemon yellow. So I'm going to have really all my, primarily all my warm colors here uh, except uh, quinacridone gold and uh, I'm going to be ready to uh, use those to put into this wet paper. So I'm going to touch it up just a little bit more with uh, some water up here to top it. Really. <clears throat> In this new studio I have, it's only like 50 square feet, and uh, and uh, it, it has sun shining in from windows here on the side, and uh, it really does heat up in here. I get very warm when I paint, even though I have an air conditioner vent right over my head. Uh, this paper really dries out fast, so uh, I think that's about as uh, wet as I can get it for right now, and uh, so let's get going. I'm going to take these colors I have here, and we're going to start putting in some really bright colors, uh, reds and uh, that sort of stuff over here. We'll change the color a little bit, pick up some of the more brighter yellows over here. Maybe this uh, uh, brightest yellow over here on the left side. We'll pull it down a little bit and uh, put some in here. Come back and throw in a few more colors. Uh, pick up some more of this orange. Uh, throw it in here. Pick up some more of this uh, scarlet, uh, quinacridone scarlet, and uh, pop it in here in some places and uh, just let this stuff mingle and, and uh, blend together 
and uh, run down the paper and uh, that's really just all this is it's just a lot of bright autumn type colors uh, and uh, hope you can see that I hope it's looking decent here uh, and I think I'm gonna just maybe throw in a few more uh, <clears throat> drier colors I'll should give you a little tip about the colors here how do you know when the paint is wet or too wet problem with watercolor is you always have to know how much water is in your brush how much water is in your paint and how much water is in your paper I just loaded this paper with a bunch of water you can see this this paint is just sort of sitting on top some of it's running down um, but if I want to put some more paint in there I need to get a drier paint right now this paint in my palette you can see I run my finger through it it's very runny it runs back together and it uh, that's, that's called very wet wet paint if I want drier paint I have to put more paint pigment in here so I have to come in and put take paint pigment out of my wells and not add any water to it so that I get a very dry paint and it will, will go in here and it will not cause blossoms okay so that's really what I'm trying to do here with this is to keep from getting uh, blossoms all right uh, that's a very pretty nice looking set of colors I have going on there uh, I could put a little more in if I want but I'm going to take a little bit of my brown get a little umber and uh, I'm still using this large brush and uh, take a little umber a little bit of my burnt sienna to warm it up a little bit and taking some quinacridone gold over here to make it get myself some more of a earth grassy color and I want to put some of that down here in the bottom in here like this along the bottom and up and uh, just be throwing that in down here maybe make it a little darker maybe add a little purple to it uh, violet to it and uh, that will change the color a little bit and uh, so blocking this all in is just sort of giving us a, a nice uh, feeling of some sort of a field here it really looks almost like an abstract right now if you didn't know what I was trying to do here um, you might have a you might think I'm just doing an abstract painting but uh, it's not going to be abstract for long it's going to be soft I'm going to try to get a nice soft covering on all of this and uh, that's really what I'm aiming for right now is get some uh, colors in here that just sort of kind of merge this together and uh, leave some room around these trees that are uh, going to be all white <clears throat> so I'm doing a little bit of negative painting right here kind of fill this in with some uh, colors that look like their ground color or whatever and uh, have a lot of uh, more water in this now and uh, so let's just kind of put some of these in and uh, let them blend together since this is uh, paper is starting to dry out when I look at it I can see the start seeing the uh, dryness of the paper coming out um, let's throw some of this in between here here okay so I'm getting some uh, cool colors here and I'm blending this all together and uh, that's pretty much it this is the area that I want you to look at this is sort of going to be the focal point in this quadrant and the rule of thirds where you cut your paper into like a tic-tac-toe uh, board and you pick one of those corners where the lines cross and you make that your focal point I'll try to keep this to be the focal point in this area over here okay so I've got that it's starting to dry out just a little and uh, I'm gonna come back now and see if we can put in just a little more drier paint and more uh, brighter colors up here where this these colors they do <coughs> dry out a lot uh, bright lighter than you put them on you put them on you think that's the right color well usually it's not the right color uh, because um, it dries about 20 to 30 percent lighter than uh, what you started with so 
you have to kind of take that into account and uh, either come back over it with a little bit drier set of paint or um, or darken it down some way. Um, so that's really all I'm doing right here right now. I'm going to come back and put a little more of this yellow in some spots, pick up a few more places over here with some yellow in it. Um, I have a little spot up here in the top that looks like it'd be a good place to put a little bit of blue like there is some sun shining through these trees. I don't have any blue in my palette right now or in my uh, haven't used any blue yet um, but I am getting some some dry edges in some places and some soft I want to make sure I have some soft edges all over so uh, where this and, and I'm, like right here this is getting a little hard right now so I'm going to just bring in my brush and sort of feather that in and kind of merge it together so I don't have real hard edges here and uh, let it sort of blend in with the background and uh, that's kind of what I want to do there here this looks pretty good um, down here in the bottom let's see how this looks um, so we can have some of our grasses start showing up here in the foreground I'm just making this marks that look like grass we'll come in and darken some of that down a little bit um, but right here is not too bad I kind of like the way this is starting to look uh, picking up some lighter spots in here you can do that with your paper uh, Kleenex paper towel or whatever get some light lighter spots to kind of change the the uh, so it's not uh, all the same color um, I'm just tapping it with my uh, Kleenex here okay all right so that's a pretty good start and you see it's still pretty wet I'm going to just use my uh, I'm going to use my uh, round brush here I'm going to pick up a little of this cobalt blue it's got some green in it from my palette I don't want that I probably even don't want that cobalt blue as, as bright as it is I'm going to get really lighter just get a little bit of a runny patch of light blue up here Let's see if I can just put a little bit in here like that there maybe another little piece over here and uh, just to give ourselves a little bit of a sky shape back here in the back so at least it, you know there's a lot of sun out it doesn't have to be a whole sky full of sun and uh, so then we'll use it like that okay all right I think maybe I can still put some more darks in here um, darker colors uh, more concentrated colors and uh, keep going as, as long as this paper still has some water in it um, I can add some uh, darker colors here and start getting a few more uh, tree shapes maybe and some things that look like there's some leaves I'm not trying to paint a ton of leaves or anything like that I'm just trying to get myself some uh, uh, areas here where I can darken the color down just a little bit if you can get uh, soften a few edges kind of let it run together here uh, if you can get three values in any of your colors you can start showing three dimensionality so right now this is supposed to kind of be all be soft with minimal hard edges and uh, so that's what I'm trying to uh, make here is soft edges this is getting a little hard up here in the top so let's soften this blue down sort of run it together and uh, don't make a lot of hard edges there either okay that's good enough for that all right now let's start moving down and getting some of the darker shadowy colors in uh, inside of this area I've got way too much warm stuff on my palette now so I'm going to take some of this out get rid of the blue I probably won't use that again uh, just leave a couple of spots in there um, so clean the palette out and let's get uh, start getting some darker colors we're going to use the uh, umber here 
And with that, I'm going to be adding some of my violet, umber, violet, and some Payne's gray. And this will start making my background a little darker in some of these areas. Let's see here, get some of the water out of this brush. And <clears throat> like right in here, let's put a little dark around this particular part of the uh, canopy. Um, needs to be darker, darker, darker. Down here we might have some darker pieces. Come down here like this. Um, I'm really using the wrong brush for this actually. Um, I need to be using my flat brush, a one inch flat. <clears throat> I want this, this brush, I want this brush to be used to sort of blend some soft edges here like this. And uh, not have it put so much uh, paint on with it, but to blend edges. So let me get my one inch flat and we'll come back into this same paint we're working on purple and uh, umber and uh, maybe you throw all this red in there to kind of warm it up a little bit and uh, let's get back in here and see if we can put a few more things around this tree here we'll have a few things come over like this and maybe have another tree I'm going to paint this is uh, how you do uh, negative painting. Um, sort of put these things in like this and all of a sudden you have uh, another tree being formed. Soften some edges and uh, let this sort of blend into the sky above, into the uh, other colors above. Okay, so now I haven't, I didn't paint that light colored tree there, but yet I have a light colored tree there. Um, just because I put so much dark around it. And uh, you can do that repeatedly over and over. Um, I can come in here and do the same on this side of this big, uh, these are actually, uh, these trees are um, what kind of trees are they? They're uh, Having to think and paint. It's hard to think and paint at the same time. Talk and paint, I should say. Uh, <laughs> birch trees is what I'm trying to think of. And uh, so they have this uh, nice kind of off-white, white or off-white bark. And uh, so you want to kind of keep them like that. And uh, we'll put some darker things in them to make them look more like birch trees after a bit. But I'm just popping in some of this dark. Um, we've got another little tree starting right here even, right? Um, maybe he's hiding behind somebody back there. Let's put a something like that and uh, let him fade into the darkness and uh, pick up a few more colors over here and let's see if we can outline this tree over here. this, uh, change the color up a little bit so we don't have all the same color. Um, what am I doing? I'm doing this tree right here. So something like this, we put in some more branches and that sort of stuff. And then come back with our bristle brush and uh, sort of soften some of this up and uh, fade it into the background uh, a little bit here, the same idea, uh, something like that. And I uh, don't want this such a flat top there. It's not a, I'm not, not trying to put in a rectangle. And uh, okay, so that's not too bad. Let's leave that for now. And uh, 
come over here and get a little bit different color. Maybe we can pick up some of these browns that we were using earlier. And uh, it's quinacridone gold and put a couple of things over here that maybe uh, look like they belong. Something like this. Put a over to this tree over here. Like that. Something like this. Um, just a little bit of a... So I don't want to beat you over the head with this, but I want to kind of make it uh, kind of all run together here so that you can just see the, the denseness in the woods. There's some more trees back there and uh, I don't think I want this one in here. It's looking too much like a, a ladder if I leave that in there. So I'm going to take that one out. Just leave a little lump in there and we'll just kind of put some more of this over this way and take our blending brush and we'll just sort of blend this up into whatever's there. So it's uh, coming along pretty well. This is uh, kind of fitting together the way I want it. Um, and hopefully we're uh, getting some good audio on this. I'm not having scratching and that sort of thing that I had in my previous videos. But um, okay, let's keep going on this. I think this is dried out. Instead of using my time to uh, blow dry this, I think I'm going to just keep going with my umber and my violets and uh, a little bit of, I, I may even put some blue in here to sort of change the color a little bit as we get over this way. Uh, throw a little bit uh, a little bit of a color change in here maybe and uh, so we can just kind of put in another thing or two of something like that and uh, use the brush to uh, blend it together mix it up there get it up in the background Something like that, and uh, just keep going on this. We keep painting across here. We got maybe another tree that's going to sit right in here between these two. Something like this, and uh, and it's going to have a little bit of a pull it down like this, more straight like that and use our blending brush again to blend the softness at the top into the trees here like this and at the bottom we'll even blend it into the ground down here and I don't want to make them the same height I want to make them different uh, different elevations where they touch the ground here so I don't have them all looking alike um, put this in again, make a little bit different color change in there. Don't want to have just rectangles and that sort of thing. I want, to, want this to look like we've got some different uh, layers of something like this. Okay. a few soft areas down here all right so we're getting some interesting colors there pick up a few more of these uh, browns my umbers and uh, that I had in the ground grass here uh, throw a few of those things across this way change the color a little bit so we're trying to get a little bit of a something that looks like a uh, <clears throat> some texture in that ground. And I want that to be soft here as it joins the other paint on the paper. And soft up here, we can pull some of this up. 
See how easy this paint moves around when you have this Fabriano Artistico paper. You can just kind of move paint around all over the place and uh, just does a wonderful job uh, by being able to lift off so easily with this, uh, this paper. All right. Um, how are we doing? I think we're uh, making pretty good progress here. Um, that's drying off pretty well up there. Um, this is still kind of wet. I don't want to mess around in there too much. Um, let me see if I can put a few more uh, colors, maybe pull this, some of this coloring down over here uh, with some uh, of my uh, scarlet and orange mixture. Like in this area here, let's see if we can put a few more colors in here that are closer to the dark tree bases or whatever they are. And uh, maybe put a few things here like this. It's going to help fill some of that out. Um, and again, using our corner of our blender brush, let's soften a few edges on the top. We're here on the side, blend this over, and uh, even on this side we can blend a little bit, pull this down, and we're getting a little bit of a color change in there. It's going from the this bluish dark color to sort of a more of a reddish color, and uh, probably start coming back and putting a few darker colors over here, and. Uh, both sides of that tree if I can there something like that um, maybe a little bit over here even and uh, just soften a little bit it helps define these edges so you can see the edge of the tree or you can see whatever you're uh, looking for I don't want to have a lot of interest over here I want this to sort of be uh, just um, lightly covered and very nondescript over there so I'm just going to kind of put in a few more things here maybe we'll scrape in a tree or two over there I don't know right now it's not very important that side I want I want this focus to be over here so I want this to not be as detailed uh, as this is and so when your eye looks here I want it to kind of look in this area first and then move around the painting and look for other other things in the painting so that's the idea of trying to get a focal point trying to get it uh, uh, maximized in your paint and uh, let's see here I get my brush back out my blending brush and hard edges get rid of the hard edges if you can wherever you can get rid of them you don't want them to uh, Every hard edge causes the eye to kind of look look there, right? So you kind of want to soften some of these edges and uh, blend them together, particularly if you're not looking to, if you don't want to have people look over here as much. Um, okay, this is getting a little bit down here. I'm going to put this, I'm going to make this shorter. I'm going to make this tree maybe back further. I did that by just whacking off the bottom of it, right? So you just come in here and whack it off and keep going. Okay. So I didn't want it to have the same, didn't want it to end at the same point this other one did. So I just cut the bottom off, moved it up. Okay. Um, how are we doing here? I think we're making pretty good progress. All right. Um, So I don't have a lot of darks. There's almost, I mean, there's a lot of room for more dark paints in here than what dark colors in here than what I've got. Um, so I'm going to come back and start putting in some more darker colors. See if I can get some blue, Payne's gray, violet, blue, violet, Payne's gray, umber to get a little warmth. And let's see if we can come in here and maybe find another place to have a, uh, a tree. We're going to make a 
second or third generation tree back here, which you call it when you're painting in uh, negative painting mode. Um, so if you can see the, uh, the color that was on the paper here, this color, um, I'm just putting in another layer of paint to kind of make it stand out with another tree right here. So that particular tree that you see right here is a third generation. First generation you got clear white paper behind it. Second generation you got maybe the first color of paint behind it. Uh, next generation would be the uh, second color you have behind it. So you can keep doing this as long as you can keep getting the paint a little darker all the time. Uh, and uh, you get some very beautiful effects by doing this. Um, it just looks like there's more there's more trees back in there. Uh, and here we can even do the same thing here. This tree can have a branch sticking out of it up here, like right here. And we'll throw a little thing in like that. And all of a sudden you've got, uh, you've put another fork on this tree that wasn't there before. And uh, we're gonna do the same thing. We'll take that and, and blend that those edges into existing colors that are there into the top, into the canopy. Soft edges will do that. And uh, so it leaves you with a, another nice looking uh, edge on this tree. And I need to kind of clean this up. It's really too, uh, not distinct enough. So now that I've done that, I can come in and sort of blend this together and uh, carve out that tree a little better. It wasn't quite as distinct as I wanted it to be. All right, more and more dark. I'm still having only used these big brushes. I haven't even used a small brush yet. Um, um, these brush hairs together. Um, this one's coming down here like this. Um, like that. And I'm gonna put a little bit more dark on this side over here. Um, like that and just give it a little bit of a softness around on both edges blend it in and let it uh, sort of run together okay so I'm getting more detail here I'm seeing more trees more uh, more detail in there and it's uh, that's where the focal point is so that's where I want you to look and uh, that's what I'm trying to do with this darker next darker set of colors now I could go a lot darker than this I may do that here before we get done and finish because um, I want it to have a very distinct dark smack you in the face type of thing um, there's a couple of other tricks that I would like to show you um, using my uh, script liner taking some clear water and just sort of tapping on some clear water here in some areas where this is dry um, we're going to get some interesting blossoms. You can't see it right now, um, but I'm going to throw a little, a little of this in to just sort of loosen up some of that paint where we have it's already dry. And uh, we can come back after a bit and I'll put in some darker uh, splotches, but this will start to bloom and blossom here when this, uh, when that paint or when that clear water uh, starts dissolving that paint underneath and it makes a sort of a white blossom something you try to keep from getting is it blossoms but sometimes they are nice to add texture to your painting and uh, you don't have to do a lot of work to get them you just kind of throw them in there and uh, let throw the water in let the let the uh, watercolor and paint do their do its work do their thing uh, cool cool trick um, let's get a little more dark in here maybe this area where I want you to look and um, put in some darker things over here like that um, again I get these when I get these horizontal looking branches it, it kind of reminds me of a ladder and I don't want to 
create ladders in here. Uh, and soften it up a little bit. And uh, so you can see there's uh, a lot of trees, a lot more trees over here than there are over this way. And that's really what uh, I'm trying to achieve here uh, by straightening this edge up. These trees don't have a lot of knots and stuff on them. They're pretty, uh, pretty straight. Most uh, birch trees are that way. Aspen trees are the same way. Uh, let's try another little bit of a color back here in this area. See if I can find another tree. I think I see one right here. Pick up a little more color. I see another tree there if I can get it to stand out. Um, I don't want it to end at the same place this other one does. I want it to be a little bit different, different sizes and uh, not go in the ground at the same spot if I can help it. So I have another thing that looks like a tree up here that's uh, sort of in the uh, going into the canopy. And uh, again, it's like a second, second generation, maybe even a third, I guess. Second generation would be what I'm putting on pretty much now. Uh, and uh, that will work. I don't know if I can even see any marks here where I splattered my water, clear water. I see a few, but they're not, not obviously uh, huge and whatever. Okay. Um, I think I'll come back now and maybe I'm still using big brushes, huge brushes, one inch brushes, nothing uh, smaller than a one inch brush so far <clears throat> for anything. Um, I'm going to come back and see if I can put in a little more, maybe brighter red in some of these areas in here to uh, give myself another dark orange, red orange color uh, and uh, another value. Okay, it's maybe hard for you to see some of that with the, uh, the lights on here, but um, I want to just get uh, drier paint, a little bit darker paint, and uh, put them in here to kind of, you know, you would have some uh, darker things going on at the bottom of these trees than you have at the top and in the middle. So uh, let's just sort of put some of that in, soften some of that, and uh, pull it into what's there. So it's not, uh, you can't necessarily see the brush strokes exactly, but you can see the, the dark paint flowing in there. Something like that. And just soften that up a little bit over there. Okay. Um, and on this right side over here, let's See if we can maybe put a little change of color. This is almost all orange, and uh, I want it to be have some more reddish color in it over here. Now I'm doing wet on dry. You see the see the dry texture up there. Dry brush. Um, the paint is doesn't have a lot of water in it, um, but it, when I put it on the paper, because it's uh, I'll put a few uh, marks that look like we got some leaves hanging down, that sort of thing. Uh, got some interesting textures there. Don't want it all to be hard edge, so let's sort of soften some of it. And uh, brush it out a little bit. And uh, just leave some of that texture in there. We can put a little more of that texture up here. Uh, here like this uh, more where I want you to look it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to have some of that up here out here even a little bit okay all right um, now let's see if I can put in just a few more darks I think I'm gonna get my smaller brush now my number my half inch 
flat <clears throat> and I'll put just a few um, tones on this this big tree here to look like we've got some shadow on it um, and uh, I'm going to come back and put a few more dark shapes in there but I want it to get uh, at least get some color on some of these trees that are way too white right now and uh, back in here let's put a few colors like that maybe a couple of two or three out here and even some over here and this one okay and uh, again use my one inch blender to sort of soften a few edges uh, and uh, make it look like this is sort of the shadows that are starting to fall around these trees from the uh, surrounding <coughs> yeah there we go I want that like that change that color okay I think I want a little more darker paint in here right now that looks too light to me let's put a little more of my some of this in here did have a tree I was trying to carve out in there just enough to let the viewer think oh there's another tree floating back in there I see it okay um, some more dark darks um, and uh, in here in some of these areas um, we could actually make a few more uh, really dark colors um, really dark in here maybe a few really dark ones so I'm I'm just kind of layering in another layer of really dark colors here to kind of highlight some of the spots that I want to uh, show off if you will something like that and uh, not going to soften them too much I'm not going to take the color away I'm going to leave that dark color in there um, over here we got some more places we could be putting in some really dark something like that and uh, so soften this edge a little bit let them blend and merge and so forth um, back in here it's going to be darker yet um, make that darker and even highlight another little tree potential in here like this like that and just soften these edges so they merge with the surrounding terrain and uh, again these bristle brushes are beautiful for this kind of thing they can just sort of blend right in so it looks like there's an area you could kind of walk back into this woods a little bit and uh, get in there and uh, see what's going on back in the woods. Um, I'm going to use the same brush and uh, start putting maybe a few of my little uh, marks that kind of tell you this is a, a birch tree. Um, again, I'm using the uh, flat brush, half inch, and uh, that a few more marks over here and some spots up here we got a few uh, something like that that makes it look like we've got some uh, trees really are birch trees and they're not some other kind of tree that you might think was out there um, put that little curve on them if you can hook them to one side maybe and uh, uh, this here has to be, i close that off, it doesn't belong there, okay. Um, 
That can soften a few of these. They don't have to all be hard edge. Uh, give myself a little bit of a something going on there with these. So they're they do blend a little bit and they do change their color. Uh, and uh, back in here we've got some more things going on. Over here we have a few uh, marks and uh, same idea. This whole thing is these are all they're all birch trees. They all have those uh, dots in them that make it look like they're uh, that's where the bark is actually peeling off and uh, so it gives it a nice lively texture and uh, so we're throwing a few things down here. We're going to throw in just a couple of these. Let's soften those up a little bit. I don't want that quite as hard. Um, take my uh, take a round brush here, and we're going to take some of this color we've got with the uh, orange and red color, and let's just see if we can get that into a little bit darker, not quite as bright, because these are like dead leaves that are falling off the trees, maybe, and we're just kind of pockmark some of those around, throw them out here and uh, wherever. Uh, something like this, throw a few up here maybe and uh, just give it a little more texture in here and uh, a few more things to, to look at. Uh, and uh, then the, the fun thing is if you can really take that same idea with this script liner and uh, get a lot of water in your brush and uh, wet it down really nicely here and a uh, few splatters like that kind of help overall add to the tone and the texture of these things. Uh, I'm going to put in a few more uh, things up here. Maybe it looked like there's some other trees floating around. But now this is positive painting. Here's what I'm doing now, right? And we're going to throw in a few tree branches and some things that kind of stick up out here. Maybe another one like here. Something like that. Throw a few more in here in some spots. So it just gives a little more indication that you've got a lot of trees and a lot of things out there. Some of them I can soften the edges so they actually blend into the, the ground below. We don't have uh, uh, a lot of uh, things. I don't want them to look like they're glued on is the, is the message. Um, so let's take now, I'm going to finish this thing up here very quickly. And here we're going to throw up a few more grasses in the foreground. Uh, and uh, something like this. We've got some grasses out there already, uh, but let's put a few more in and then come back with my script liner and uh, add to that uh, some, a lot more. These are in the foreground, so they can be fairly large. You can have them be as about as large as you want to make them. Uh, kind of set everything else back like this and uh, uh, maybe a couple more uh, tree trunk things over here to show up we got some stuff going on so it's not don't want it to be beautiful I just want it to kind of be filled out so we have uh, have everything kind of going and uh, these are sort of really sticking up over the trees that are there. And uh, one more, I didn't really get a lot of splatter on there from my last attempt. So I'm gonna try it again here with a few more splatters. There we go. That gets me more, uh, it's called texture basically, but it's basically just splatterings that make it look like it's a real beautiful scene. And uh, once that's done, I probably put a few more things in here, I don't know. Um, okay, um, I think that's going to be uh, going to be it. And uh, I've done this in about an hour, which is uh, the time I wanted to uh,
to do it in my demo when I do my demo next week or week after and uh, so I'm only going to have about an hour to do this and I'm going to have to talk and answer questions of our residents here and so I just want to be able to test and see if I could do this is 11 by 14 um, so uh, I'll be doing a little bit larger painting when I do my final my real demo and uh, so I hope you like this hope you can uh, give something like this a try and uh, and let me know how you like it I'm uh, sweating here you can see this is my uh, new studio environment <laughs> I'm gonna have to get myself a standalone air conditioner I think um, anyway this is it and uh, so I'll leave you with that leave you with that for now and until I see you again it's Larry Hamilton saying so long for now bye bye